Wayne, we're ready when you are. Okay, so imagine a scenario, if you will. If I walked up to a random 14-year-old girl on the street and asked her, during the last 12 months, how many different partners have you had sex with, how do you think her father would react if he was standing there and overheard me asking her that question? And let's not stop there. How would this father react if he entrusted me to watch over his 14-year-old daughter when he was away, and while he was gone, I asked this daughter the same question and then I shared her answer with a bunch of strangers, all without telling the father what his daughter was specifically asked and how she responded and who I was sharing it with specifically. I use these analogies to express the concerns that we have with the 2022 Minnesota State Survey. This is a survey that is conducted in public schools across this state. While parents are given the option to opt their children out of taking the survey, and even though the consent notice to this survey states, quote, high school students are asked about sexual behavior, the consent notice does not adequately convey what parents are getting their children into if they consent to the survey. The consent form fails to include any specific examples of survey questions that parents might find problematic. Some of these questions are not only deeply disturbing, but are completely inappropriate to ask a child in a general school study. Now here's a sample of some of these questions, and these are listed in one of the copies that you have in front of you. For 9th to 12th graders, these questions include, during the last 12 months, how many different partners have you had sex with? Have you ever traded sex or sexual activity to receive money, food, drugs, alcohol, a place to stay, or anything else? Have you ever pressured, tricked, or forced someone to do something sexual, or have you done something sexual to someone against their wishes? For 6th to 8th graders, their questions will include, during the last 12 months, on how many occasions, if any, have you used crack, crack or cocaine in any form, used heroin, used methamphetamine? What is your gender identity? Mark all that apply. How do you describe your sexual orientation? Has any relative family member ever pressured, tricked, or forced you to do something sexual or done something sexual to you? Now, we do not dispute that there are times and places where these kinds of sensitive questions are appropriate and at times necessary to ask, but these instances must be done on an individual basis, have probable cause, and must always include full transparency to parents. Anything less than full transparency to parents is unacceptable when you're dealing with sensitive questions like this. And we believe that such questions do not belong on a randomized school survey that will be examined by people with no relation to the parents of our students. Now considering all this, 
We have four questions for this board, and these questions are listed on the other page of your handout, so you do have the questions to refer back to. So the first question is, has this survey been conducted in the Roseville area schools yet? If not, question number two, if not, will this board commit to doing whatever it can to stop the implementation of this survey? Question number three, if this board is unable or unwilling to stop this survey from being conducted, will this board commit to including the text of the questions listed on your handout in the message notifying parents about the opt-out option since the current consent form fails to include the text of any questions listed in the survey? And finally, number four, if this survey is conducted, will this board commit to ensuring that the parents of every child taking this survey are given a copy of the completed survey their child has filled out, ensuring the parents know exactly how their child answered all the questions on the survey? With that, thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to hearing a response from you. And second speaker is Bruce Ona, who is a parent and community member. Hello, neighbors. I'm talking on the mask today. There should be no medical <coughs> or mask mandates for Roseville schools. Students' medical decisions are between uh, the child, parents, and the doctor of their choice. Government is not their doctor. It's best medical practices will vary from student to student. For example, I'm a healthy Roseville resident and I suffered from a respiratory illness for four weeks from inhaling the plastic microfibers that came loose in a surgical mask, which is why I'm wearing the woven uh, mask, because I can't wear a surgical mask. So MS News assembled a panel of medical experts to assess long-term mask wearing. Dr. Samuel Aurelius, a Philadelphia cardiologist, cited as an expert by MSN News, stated, in the case of surgical masks, which are made of non-woven fabric, the exposure for some people can trigger an asthma-like inflammatory response in the lungs. This is likely due to the inhalation of the microfibers and the material that forms the masks. So I can testify to that. And especially kids, you know, that are running, singing, talking, uh, playing sports, they would be more vulnerable to these microfibers coming loose as they breathe deeper, of course. Uh, also, part of this expert panel on MSN was Dr. Esteban Kosak. He's a doctor of medicine, MD, an expert researcher, symptoms dot care. He noted prolonged wearing of a mask can greatly weaken the immune system. He stated scientific investigations have proven that a prolonged denial of enough oxygen in the body can cripple the ability of our immune system to tackle infections, which is even worse with older and younger people. And also part of this MSN panel of experts was Dr. Lily Barsky, internist, shared that activities that result in expulsion of air, talking, singing, exercising, causes an accumulation of carbon dioxide between the face and the mask, causing shortness of breath and lightheadedness. Thank you. 